Okay, let's take a look at making some backgrounds using After Effects. If it's not here in the menu, you can type AFT in the search and initiate the After Effects program. After Effects is a 3D motion graphics program that is extremely powerful and needs a lot of scratch space. So what it's telling me right here is that the disk cache folder is getting full. That's the C drive. So we're going to fix this Close that by going to Edit, Preferences, and going to Media and Disk Cache. You should always check to make sure that your conformed media cache and your disk cache folders are set to the D drive cache folder, which if it's not there, you can make one, and that way it'll be easy to clean it out as needed. We'll do this for all our different Adobe programs. So in this case, it's set to where the default is. We're going to choose, go to Computer, D drive and find the folder called cache. Again, if it's not there, you can make it. So now D cache, D cache, D cache, all set to go. Okay, next thing is untitled projects are forbidden. So the first thing we do is save as some kind of project, even if it's a test project or whatever. I'm going to go to my H drive because, again, the recipe that we're creating in this program doesn't take up a lot of space. It's what we render out and the scratch disk that's so big. So we're going to go to our Big Bertha rocket and call this 150126 Rocket Backgrounds. Okay, so this is After Effects. You see this looks sort of like a timeline, but there is no blank one to start with like there is in Premiere. In Premiere we get Sequence 01 and After Effects they're called Compositions. So we're going to go to Composition and make a new one. Okay, and what we do want to do is we want to match what we have in Blender, 1920 by 1080. So in After Effects, the composition for HDTV 1080 will give us that same resolution. Square pixels, progressive frames, 30 seconds right here. So this is where you could change the time. Now we're going to start off with the stars. The background color should be black. And click OK. Well, let's do that again. Rename that composition Star Background. Forgot to do that. So here we have a 30 second timeline, but no, nothing on there for layers. In order to put an effect onto something, you have to have that something. So I'm going to click in the Star Background composition and create a new layer that's just a solid color. And this is going to be the color of our stars, so we're going to name this solid Stars and we'll choose some nice white stars. You can make them different colors, and I'll show you what that means, but we're going to go ahead and create this solid. Now, that should fill this up. You will be tempted to use your mouse wheel and scroll in and out. The best thing to do is go back to fit so that this will always show you what it is that's going to be recorded. Now that we've got our solid block of color, we're going to add an effect here, a simulation effect called Starburst. And as you can see, there are a lot of different things to experiment with, a lot of fun stuff in here. We're going to go with the Starburst for right now. And it's a one-click animator that will give you this. You can see that it's rendering right here. For a very complex scene, it needs to render it in order for the speed to really be at the right one. Right here, because I've got Blender rendering in the background, this is not real time. So you let it render, it creates a, disk, a file on the disk, and then you can see what its actually speed is going to be like. So these are all different numbers here that you can experiment with. Scatter will move them further apart. Speed, of course, will speed them up so it goes even faster. We want something relatively slow because we're drifting through space or you can keyframe. So if we want it to start off at a pretty fast speed, go for that for about five seconds. We can set a keyframe for that speed, go forward in time another five seconds, and bring it down to something very low. So that's going to start off pretty fast. And then when it gets to that first keyframe, it's going to start slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. 
So you can see where we can time this with whatever we want in our rocket. Let's watch that again. Now in order to see those keyframes, there's no spot over here to the left like there was in Premiere. You can open this up, find the effects, keep looking for whatever it was that was keyframed, but that can be rather difficult sometimes. So close it all up, press the U key, and there's the keyframes. Whatever you have keyframed will show up with just those diamonds. Makes it a lot easier to move things around, make it slow down right off the bat, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, grid spacing right here, we can also spread them out and then change the size of the stars to something smaller. And we've got ourselves a pretty realistic looking star field. So what we're going to want is 30 seconds of that. So let's save this. And we'll be able to insert this composition into Premiere. And then if we want to change things, like say, oh wait, I want it to start get to its speed at 10 seconds, you come over here, change the position of the keyframe, and there you have it. It's, it's done in Premiere. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'll come back and show you another one. We'll continue it with the clouds. Mm -hmm.